Alec and Nigel, thank you for being here for Arts Advocacy Day 2012. Thanks for joining us. And I wondered if you could talk to me about, if you could say one thing to the legislatures and the president, members of Congress about supporting the arts. What would, what would it be? What argument would you use to convince them? You first. All right. Well, I, I believe that arts education in schools is probably the most important area to put money into, money that is so sorely missed. I think that um, uh, now at a time of uh, economic uncertainty and, and uh, you know, fiduciary, uh, grim reality here in Washington, we need to go the opposite way. We need to, we need to re, uh, recommit ourselves to federal funding for the arts because a lot of corporate sponsors who have been great corporate citizens in sponsoring the arts are retreating from those positions. Some don't, but some have. And so there are communities, especially outside of major cities like New York and Chicago and San Francisco and so forth, where reliance on those federal dollars is imperative. And that's really all they have. So I think that the, uh, this is a time now when we have to commit uh, ourselves again to making sure that that money is there. Thank you. And I want to ask one other question. That's if you had to think about the wonderful arts experiences you've had, what's a particular arts experience that's just really um, Im impassioned you or given you inspiration? The experience for me was beginning tap dancing. I mean, that changed my entire life. It changed my family's life. <laughs> It took me from being a docker son in Liverpool to being able to come here and talk to Congress. You know, this is, I'm, I'm ashamed that people look on the arts as snobbery. Uh, it's disgusting. The arts are what makes mankind special. It separates us from the animals. Uh, it annoys me. I how, how can they look at the arts with snobbery when you and I are in them? That's true enough. I mean, good God. <laughs> I'm from Massapequa, the Liverpool of Long Island. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> Um, but the, uh, my, my answer to that question is for me, uh, I mean there are many answers you can give, but the one I'm always fondest of is, is what is the look in the eyes of children when they discover their own place in the arts. My daughter uh, lives in Los Angeles with her mother and she would take dance at a dance school there in uh, California. And they had a, my, my friend Pam Ornstein, who is from uh, Cape Town, South Africa, has lived in the United States for many years. She runs this program called Dance Dimensions. And they have these kids, they're of all ages, who come in for dance class. And when you see these little girls, these little kids are four years old, come out in their little ballet outfits, and they start to get it. They start to put the pieces together. You see how, how happy it is, and what, a, what an incredibly beautiful part of their identity it becomes. They're like, they, you start to stand in that way, like, I'm a dancer, you're a dancer. So, you know, dancers have that kind of. I mean, they can't help you. They'll go, I, you know, I'm a little, I'm, I'm so much better than We're you. all dancers. I mean, we, we unlearn dance as we get older. You know, you put a piece of music on, any baby will smile first and then just rock to the music. It's just inherent in an assault. I think you're being modest because I could never do that. <laughs> I, I think you're, you've been stigmatized. You're being very kind. Anyway, thank you. Well, thank you so much.